The 121st edition of the men's Paru Bay was a display of sheer power as, spoiler alert, Mattia van der Poel broke away from the leading group with 60 kilometers to go. And by 50K to go, the chase had all but given up trying to bring him back. But as we know, Paru Bay is a race where bike tech plays a massive role. Every year there's new developments, new tech being tested, and ever more ways the teams try and tame the cobbles. So in 2024, what were the biggest tech trends? Well, for starters, across both men's and women's pelotons, the move to one by was vast. Mainly seen on SRAM-sponsored teams, the benefit of not dropping a chain and simplified gear shifting with the use of satellite shifters was widely adopted. Since the race holds its difficulty in the cobbles rather than any harsh gradients, it was easy for riders to simply adopt a wider range cassette to give them the gears that they needed. Also, some may have been looking to optimise drivetrain efficiency by keeping a super straight chain line, as Ineos rider Josh Tarling had a massive 62 tooth chain ring fitted to his Shimano spec Pinarello Dogma. Sadly though, thanks to a bottle which was slightly too sticky, he was then later disqualified from the race. I am really hoping that next year he will have a better shot because he is certainly a rising star. While Josh's 62 tooth chainring was the biggest I saw in use, there were plenty of other riders using single chainring setups in the mid 50 range. Thanks to the widespread adoption of one by setups, there was also a myriad of chain catches being used. These range from OEM parts from brands like Wolftooth and K-Edge through to some slightly more imaginative 3D printed solutions. Israel Premier Tech decided to opt for one of the most bizarre bike choices. They jumped aboard the Factor Ostro Gravel. That's right, they used the gravel bike for Paru Bay. It's reported that the team were running some relatively wide 34C Continental GP5000 STR tyres. Arguably, it's not the most ridiculous idea. The Factor Ostro Gravel is a very aero gravel bike and the position and clearance would stand them in good stead over the technical terrain. However, their top place rider finished seven minutes down on the winner in 31st. Perhaps had the course been muddier or the weather been a little more dreary, then they may have had an advantage, but this time round, it might not have been the right move. The style of bike, which did seem to be on the rage, was out and out aero bikes. In fact, Uno X rider Alexander Kristoff decided to use a prototype aero bike from the team sponsor, Dare. Predicted to be named the Velocity Ace, it looks to be as aggressive as they come with a super deep head tube making use of the new UCI rules. It was a similar story for the rest of the men's peloton as aero bikes looked to be the go-to choice where the riders had the option. It was a slightly different story for the women as they had a slightly wider variation of bike choices, with some opting for the Trek de Marne over the Madone, or some opting for the Canyon Ultimate over the Air Road, but even that could be set to change over the coming years. Clearly, the current sweep of endurance bikes, including the Specialized Roubaix, are no longer suitable for the cobbled classic. Perhaps they've become too soft, or perhaps aero bikes have just become versatile enough to the point where they can be used very successfully on the hardest of parkours. Personally, I think it's a mix of the two. I think it is fair to assume that the bikes which made the podium did so because of one simple fact. They can all accept much wider tires. Maybe, just maybe, this is the most influential factor on the versatility of modern road bikes. As such, the Peloton's favourite tyre size was 32C, with only a handful of teams providing an exception to the rule. The biggest tyres we saw sat on British national champion Fred Wright's bike as he was using some 35C Continental GP5000 ASTRs, which pushed his Merida's tyre clearance to the very limit. Lidl Trek were actually running some prototype Pirelli tyres that despite saying they were 32mm wide, when paired with the new Bontrager Aeolus Pro 49V gravel wheels, they measured up at 34.5mm. This big volume tyre will have helped Mads Pedersen run a low pressure and enjoy a nice big contact patch with the cobbles. 
It's worth remembering that the maximum size of tyre that can be used in a cyclocross race is 33C. So not only is the Peloton's choice of 32C one we know that can be ridden on technical terrain, but it might also be why the current cyclocross world champion won the race. This is kind of why I love Mattia Vanderpol's setup so much. Other than some wide tyres, some double wrap bar tape and some tyre inserts, it's just a normal Canyon Air Road. No gimmicks or tricks up its sleeves. Just big rubber and a rider who has buckets of technical ability.